So when you're editing a scene transition in VR video, um, it's really good to think about where the viewer's attention is likely to be and um, how that changes at the point of the cut. Uh, so for example, if I had a scene that took place um, in this scenario, um, this is a 360 photo, uh, I can't assume that I know um, for sure where my viewer is looking because they have the freedom to turn and look anywhere they want in the headset. They could be looking at their feet. They could be looking at the clouds, um, anything. I can't force them to look um, like you might in, an, in a traditional flat video edit um, by just cutting to the next shot or cutting to close up or something like that. But I can uh, try my best to convince them to look. Um, you might do that with a uh, color or motion um, blocking of a lead character or um, even sound that is directional. Um, but we can do some um, uh, educated guessing as to where our viewer's attention might be just based on our scene transition. So um, if this was our location, I'm going to look around and think like it's unlikely, I think, that our viewer is looking down or up in general. I think that's that's unlikely. Um, I also think it's a little less likely that they would be looking out this way. It may catch their attention because it's bright, but everything is very far in the distance and there's not a lot of um, activity to catch one's attention. Uh, I think if I were to guess, this is probably the focal point of this scene. Um, it's symmetrical, it draws the eye in, and it has kind of Z space and perspective lines that make me think that's probably where people are going to be looking. So if I can assume that a lot of people watching my VR film will be looking there, then I want to think about at the point of transition, what is there in this doorway when we cut? So here is the cut. Okay, um, so this is another uh, 360 still, um, and in this case, uh, it's a um, it's a museum, like a museum of um, television technology, I think. And uh, it so happens that the point of the cut here from door goes to nothing in particular. Um, this distant uh, vitrine or or you know glass case. Um, that's, uh, that's not particularly eye-catching. So we want to take some control over that and um, choose what we cut to in 360 space. Uh, so there's a great um, effect to do that called VR Rotate Sphere. And when we drag that onto our clip, we can pan around the Y-axis, as uh, Premiere refers to it, or we could tilt or roll. I'll talk about those in a minute. But as I look for options, I notice this shot also happens to have a door. <laughs> um, so this won't be like a perfect match cut, but it's going to be pretty suggestive, like a kind of uh, similar um, graphic match. It's It's got a doorway. It's got uh, some Z space. There's people there, so they might be interesting or catch our attention. There's even some bright light. Um, so I can try to uh, match those up with some specificity um, because of the VR rotate sphere. And then, um, again, you know, I'm not trying to make it perfect, but just suggestive that um, maybe maybe this is a documentary that's like, you know, from old times till today, we've always been, whatever, going through doorways. Um, and, uh, and so that match cut might um, help make the edit seem more thought about, you know, more planned. Um, now, of course, we can't know for sure this is where people are looking. It might be that people are looking over here in a bright area. Um, so we can see, you know, does that gain us anything when we look at uh, point of interest B or C, you know, and just see, like, is, is there, um, you know, anything we can do to um, polish this edit a little bit? Um, so while you won't have as much control over look specifically at this one thing in close up, you can think about um, which parts of the VR frame are more likely to command attention and then what uh, is happening at that transition. Um, 
the other thing incidentally you can do with VR rotate sphere is sometimes uh, people will film um, upside down. Uh, let's say they hang a camera from a ceiling with a monopod instead of um, tripod on the floor. Uh, so you could 180 um, to flip the, the whole image upside down if necessary. Um, you can also roll on the Z axis. This is especially useful um, if you have your tripod sort of out of level on, um, on inconsistent terrain or something like that. You can, um, you can change where the horizon is. So you might just do subtle um, rolls unless you were looking for an extreme effect for some reason. Um, the last thing to think about at a transition, at least in this tutorial, is that there are indeed um, VR transitions uh, in Premiere. And um, like many <laughs> video edit transitions, some of them are, are a little tacky. Um, but uh, I want to point your attention to the VR iris wipe. Um, I know that uh, typically uh, in, in flat film editing, um, a hard cut is almost always the answer. And when it's not, maybe a cross dissolve is the answer. And um, I could cross dissolve here um, and it would do what we would expect it to do. Uh, and that could be fine. But um, I want to point out that unlike in flat film, um, I think uh, wipes and iris wipes in particular are not as uh, tacky <laughs> or at least not as um, stylistically forward as, as they might uh, seem in, in classic film editing. Um, and here's the reason. If I throw an iris wipe on a spherical video, um, the wipe is typically so large, um, it takes up so much space, you know, uh, just geometrically, that um, <clears throat> we, we almost see it like a cross dissolve, um, just one that has a directionality to it. Um, so if we happen to be looking uh, this way, and then you notice that a transition kind of sweeps off to the right um, as I frame by frame that, we're probably likely as viewers to turn our heads and follow that transition. Um, so if uh, we use the VR iris wipe and you click on the, the wipe itself, you know, the little kind of band-aid that connects the two clips here, um, you can change what's called the point of interest. Um, and uh, let's see if I flip it around, I could, um, I could potentially try to draw our eye uh, towards that doorway um, that we were interested in earlier. So maybe it's, uh, maybe it's really just like zero um, by 1440. And then you know, if we were looking this way and then our transition came frame by frame, we're probably likely to turn with it and follow it to that door. Um, so using that point of interest um, coordinate, you can set it anywhere. You could set it up, down, you know, uh, partway, <laughs> any, anywhere in the 360 sphere. Um, the, the one other component that it has is a feathering um, effect. And so uh, with feathering turned way, way up, this can really effectively be a cross dissolve that just has um, some directionality to it in the immersive space. So um, it can it can avoid some of what you might associate with the the cartoony um, Looney Tunes ness of a uh, of a typical iris wipe um, by making that transition and just guiding our eye towards the next thing we want people to see. Um, of course, if you want that Looney Tunes look, you can turn the feathering all the way off and get something that's much more cartoony. Um, so those are two tricks that I use to edit between scenes in VR video, um, making sure I rotate to an appropriate match cut and um, using an iris wipe to direct attention.